legislators to put a moratorium on Marcellus hydrofracking, the whole fracking process. For this moratorium, we are asking for a waiting period, a period to stop this kind of drilling until strict, binding, credible, sustainable, competently supervised regulations are legislated to control and monitor this industry and protect the citizens of West Virginia. Without this, it should be banned altogether. We are here to tell you that there are some things not worth sacrificing, such as your children, the future of your children, and the future of your grandchildren. We are here to tell you that you will, we will not become collateral damage to this industry. We're not here to beg. We're here to demand. We have the right to clean water, clean air, and uncontaminated land. My husband and I bought our farm about 10 years ago, and we started a house about five years ago, just before the drilling came to the county. So now we're afraid to finish our house because the property values in our area have decreased so much. Who wants to buy a house with a well pad in the backyard? That's an industrial zone. We have compressor stations now. There are two compressor stations within three miles of my home, and we can hear them every day running. They were supposed to put noise um, reduction panels around them, and they've never done it yet. So we hear them every day, 24-7. Our small community has been turned into an industrial zone. What once was a very rural community, there's about 35 families that live out there. Uh, we're about 15 miles from New Martinsville. And what once would take us 30 minute drive to town today can turn into hours because we have one access road from where I live to New Martinsville and the truck accidents. It's on a daily basis there are trucks blocking the road for hours on end. So we have to detour which can take us 10 to 15 minutes or 10 to 15 miles to go around to get to our destination. Lots of days we cancel doctor appointments or cancel things that we want to go do because the roads are blocked because of all this truck traffic. Another thing is the dust. We have a lot of dirt roads up where I live. The dust is every day. You can see it's clouds and clouds of dust. And we breathe this in. The road, the trees along our roads are gray instead of green this time of year because there's so much limestone dust. So not only are trees breathing it in, we're breathing it in. We have documented hundreds, if not thousands, of these accidents in our area. Uh, as the Wetzel County Action Group, we started four years ago documenting these. When we, we have CVs, so when we hear that there's an accident, we go take photos. So we have lots of photos of leaks, diesel leaks, diesel spills, chemicals, and try to call the DEP and get them out there. Sometimes it can take three days before they'll show up. So by then, the evidence has usually either been washed away or they've cleaned it up and threw it over the hill somewhere. This natural gas boom is coming at a huge cost to the people of West Virginia. It is a life changer to the people who live near these industrial sites. Air pollution, water pollution, noise pollution. I'm sure that 100 years ago, when the minerals were severed from the land, 
Drilling thousands of feet into the ground and pumping thousands of gallons of chemicals underground was not imagined. The regulations we have in place today were written for a different era of oil and gas extraction. We need to put a stop to the destruction of West Virginia and get stronger regulations in place before it's too late. I appreciate all the support that you all have shown us in our request uh, to uh, Randy Huffman and the governor in support of a moratorium on new Marcellus well permits. It's been nearly four months since that uh, failed regulatory bill didn't pass the legislature. It's also been nearly four months since I wrote that controversial letter to the DEP and the governor. We ask this in regard to needing better environmental protections as well as protections for our mineral and our surface owners, not to mention the health of our citizens. Since then, I've had constituents come up to me who have been hired in the industry or have family members in the industry, and they say, please, don't, don't over-regulate us. They're going to go somewhere else if you do. And I, and I, I asked my sister, how much regulation is too much regulation? How can you tell me how much is too much? How much water pollution is too much? If you have well water and, and they fracked a well near your property and, and potentially contaminated it through the act of fracking or through surface contamination or through uh, methane contamination. How much air pollution is too much? If you're living downwind from a, a well site that's 200 feet or so away from your property and your volatile, volatile organic compounds are off-gassing from the flowback containers. How much is too much? I think we all know that answer. And there isn't too much regulation when it comes to protecting the environment and the health of our citizens. You know, I know there are probably good, maybe even great drillers and, and well owners out there that are, that are capping the gas under the, the feet of West Virginians. And <clears throat> it's not these people that we have to be worried about. We have to be worried about the ones that aren't doing a good job, that aren't good stewards of the environment, that don't care about the health and well-being of the community and the citizens of their state. It's all about profit for them. And the ones that are doing a good job seem to be a, as loud of a complainer about regulations as the ones that aren't. And I think it's more because they don't like being told what to do. Well, we are going to tell them what they need to do because we need to protect West Virginia, the citizens, the environment, and the health of our communities. It's for these reasons that we worked so hard this past session to draft a strong regulatory framework bill put protections in the environment, excuse me, and to put protections in, in in the event that the aquifer is contaminated through the act of hydrofracking or through surface contamination, that the owners of the well or drillers would be required to remediate the groundwater until it met the Clean Water Act standards. We need to increase the bonding for wells so we can afford pay the property damage when they don't fix the land after they damage it, as well as capping the wells. Right now, the industry can get a blanket bond for 50 or 100 wells. We need to have single individual well bonds for every well in West Virginia. Yes. Yeah. We need to make sure that there's the tailings and the cuttings from these wells in the event that they're found radioactive need to be monitored, stored, handled, and disposed of in accordance with the West Virginia Public Health Code, Chapter 26, or Article 26, Chapter 16 of the Public Health Code. There are so many issues that need addressed in these regulations, and every time we scratch the surface, there seems to expose a new layer of potential problems that need to be considered. Some of these are the potential for property devaluation. If you own property and there's a well put on it, 
And whether it's a million dollar house or a twenty thousand dollar house, if that property is devalued, you should be compensated. The county should be compensated for lost tax revenue. And we need to look at the issues of high risk areas where people may lose their insurance. If a well is too close to your property with all the fires and explosions that had happened this past winter, if you're in too high risk of an area, is your insurer going to drop you? We need to look at all of these issues. We need to study them and we need to create some responsible legislation to cover these issues as well. Well, I'm here because I'm Bob Henry Baber and I'm running for the governorship of West Virginia on the Mountain Party ticket. So I'll be the only person running that really wants to regulate fracking and protect the surface. I'm here to represent many people who cannot be here today. I bought my grandmother's farm in 1968. It's a surface, owner, surface only farm. We own nothing underneath the farm. This is the broad form deed. These are what these deeds were called. Mine was signed in 1911. And it basically gives the coal companies and the gas companies the right to come in and do whatever they please. It says put roads in, on, under, across, and through, and over the land without being in any way liable for any injury or damage, which may be done to the water or there in a pond, and generally free, clear, and discharged of and from all servitude to the land whatsoever. They were environmental blank checks. I'm for regulation. Uh, I'm for a moratorium until we have regulation. Uh, right now, you know, the drilling fee is $600 per well. It should be $40,000 per frack. That would be 1% of the cost of that well. 1%. Or put it in this context, that's half of what the people pay on their food tax. Fair is fair. We need to protect the environment by hiring more inspectors. We can't trust the companies. We should never trust the companies. And we'll use the leftover additional monies that we generated to diversify our economy for when this gas is gone. So we need okay. to protect the water Thank you very much. and the people. Um, and what's your biggest concern about Marcella Shell? Let me know if you can hear me. Well, if you can hear me, raise your property hand. Property values. Okay, great. Property values, the and values of, the, of people's farms. This is a, this is a threat to our whole way of life.